Welp, I ended up buying the dozer. Uh, we got a little bit of a correction from the previous video. The seller told me it was a 1952 model after I got it home and checked the serial number uh, with a Caterpillar, antique Caterpillar owner's website. I found out that the machine is actually a 1954 model, so only uh, 65 years old. And uh, I'll put a little video clip in real quick, but uh, good news, the tractor does steer now left and right. When I, the last video, when I went to look at it, uh, when we got it running, uh, the steering clutches were seized in the tractor and all it could do was move forward and backwards and raise and lower the blade. But when we were trying to get it loaded up onto the trailer, uh, the steering clutches came loose on the left side and started to steer. Well, the guy's father was on a bobcat and he started pushing and uh, he pushed the machine trying to steer it, straighten it up where we could drive it on the trailer and the right clutch freed up. So now it's got steering both ways. I believe a big part of the issues with the steering is that the steering clutch levers are way out of adjustment. I was able to find a PDF, uh, service manual, parts manual, and operator's manual for this tractor. And in the operator's manual, it states that the steering levers are supposed to have three inches of free travel from the part position to where they start to engage the clutches. These levers have about seven inches of free play, so a lot of slop. They need to be tightened up, uh, adjusted correctly. That'll probably take up a lot of the uh, issue with the steering. The brakes are out of adjustment. A uh, ton of stuff with this tractor right now. But uh, the main thing with me buying it was I got it for $2,000. It runs well enough. It moves forward and backwards under its own power. The blade raises and lowers, you can steer it, and it pushes dirt, and it pushes dirt pretty uh, well. The uh, guy had uh, healed up a little bit, so it's not that uh, it has no, it's not that it runs and it has enough power just to barely move itself, it will push dirt. So that's the majority of the issues. Uh, the, I mean, that's the main things I wanted out of it. I mean, it's not gonna be a show piece, I'm not gonna do a full restoration, but we are gonna go through and address some issues with the tractor. Uh, one thing is when they had it sitting, it sat for two years or more. They told me two years. It could have been more than that from the last time they used it till recently the last week when they uh, got ready to sell it. So they had to crack loose all the injector lines to bleed the air out of the uh, lines between the injection pump and the injectors. Uh, well, there's a geyser of fuel shooting out of cylinder two. I believe they just didn't tighten down that line. I hope that's all it is. Hopefully the line isn't uh, corroded or has a hole in it or there's another issue there. Um, the big issue right now is I can't start it. To get this tractor running, you have to pull start it. And seeing as how that's a two person operation and there's only one of me, that leaves me out. Uh, I would try to pull start it with the tractor and by itself, you know, throw it in gear. But uh, I don't want this thing come hauling up and uh, running the back of the 766 or the 574 in the amount of time it would take me to stop the tractor, run off, get on this and disengage the clutch. Even in first gear crawling, it would probably uh, catch up cause my logging chain's pretty short. If I had a really long logging chain, I might be stupid enough to try something like that. But uh, yeah, I don't want to get run over by this thing, so. The main thing we gotta do is get the pony motor up and going. Pony engine. Everyone calls them pony motors, it's an engine. It runs on internal combustion, it's not electric. The uh, pony engine on this dozer is actually pretty neat, I think, because it is a boxer engine, and as you all know on my other channel, I'm Mr. Subaru, so pretty neat. There's a little two-cylinder boxer engine with, uh, it's a flat head design, so one, uh, cylinder head on either side, basically, you know, 
hose, piston engine, boxer engine. And uh, it's been completely disassembled while they were messing with it. There's parts of the carburetor missing, lots of nuts and bolts are missing for the air cleaner fuel tank and other things associated with the pony. So I'm gonna have to find fasteners, get that all back right. Uh, they disconnect, uh, not disconnect, they unbolted the magneto. Spark plug wires are missing. Spark plugs are really junky. One spark plug, the spark plug here on the right hand cylinder head was actually out. And I ran a boroscope in there. I didn't see a bunch of corrosion. So thankfully no water got in that cylinder. Uh, a little bit of humidity got in there and put some surface rust on valves, but that shouldn't be enough to harm it where it won't run. Uh, sorry for the sniffling. I've, my allergies have been acting up. Other than that, we've got uh, the other main issue I have right now. I actually caused this issue yesterday when I was inspecting the tractor after I got it home is the rocker cover. Uh, the rocker cover gasket had been leaking. So the way it's designed is there's four studs coming out of the cylinder head and then the pedestals for the valve train for the rocker shafts bolt uh, slide down over those four studs and then there's a nut on top and you torque that nut to secure the rocker in place. Well then you set the valve cover on top of that and there's four nuts that with uh, grommet grommeted washers under it that you tighten the uh, rocker cover down to the head. Well they had super over tightened it and they actually bent the center line where those bolt holes are uh, of the rocker cover. So I'm about to take that and bend, beat that back out, trying to straighten it out. What it also did was it flared out the bottom where the mating surfaces of the cylinder head do seal. So that's all out of whack. So there's lots of oil running down from the rocker cover. So I'm gonna have to address that. I'm gonna have to try to find a gasket. I haven't had much luck searching on the internet. I haven't called the Caterpillar dealer yet. I do have the part number for the rocker cover gasket, but I'm not, probably gonna have to make the majority of the gaskets on this uh, tractor just by you know bulk gasket and material and I do have a die punch set so I can make my own gaskets but that's a little bit different the shape of it uh see other than that we're just going to do a general tune and service because this thing is bad out of service uh it has engine oil in it but it is thinned out it either has diesel or water or something's gotten into it I'd assume water from it sitting uh the there's no water or coolant in it so hopefully they haven't cracked the block or the head or the head gasket from running it but these old tractors are tough so hopefully it's all right the temp sensor was out of the head i put it back in by hand but i'm going to find a new temp sensor because it's no good it's all all the glass and the gauge is illegible on it and the oil pressure gauge so those need to be replaced uh, I put a gallon of coolant in it yesterday and it didn't phase it. I think the capacity is like six gallons. So gonna have to get that squared away. The belt's on it, but it's super loose and it's ancient. So I'm trying to find a belt part number that cross references with the cat number I have. I found a Gates and a Daco number, but they're not orderable, orderable through the parts house I normally use. So I'm gonna go online and see if I can find a belt. Uh, the hydraulic pump, with the hydraulics they do work but the pump was whining i'm assuming that either the hydraulic fluid is low or the hydraulic fluid is degraded there's probably water in it. it's probably a combo it's probably bad uh contaminated hydraulic and it's low so we're going to flush that out put new hydraulic fluid in it uh, we're going to flush the transmission we're going to pull the drain for the clutch housing it's probably got water in it uh, when I was looking yesterday, trying to see about the steer clutches, I pulled the inspection cover off where you do the adjustment for the steer clutch levers, and there was water and uh, I assume some gear oil from the differential seals was in that housing. So we need to pull those two drains and drain that all out because those are supposed to stay dry. And I believe the operator manual said every 60 hours operation, you're supposed to open those plugs and drain that out. Well, this thing sat so long and rainwater and everything else has got in there, so it's a big mess. So we need to get that drained out, try to flush some of that junk out. Uh, the main air cleaner, uh, the top for the air cleaner is missing. Uh, this is off another machine, I assume. It was something they had laying around, so I've got that cap just to keep water out of it. We'll have to figure out something about that. The throttle linkage was off of the tractor. They were just throttling it up on the governor on the side of the engine and running it. Uh, I finally, 
figured out the linkage routing, but the three bolts that mount it to, I believe the intake manifold of what it looked like on the diesel engine on the other side of the tractor, those three bolts are snapped off. So we're gonna have to extract that, get some new hardware for that. Uh, everything's loose on the pony, intake, carburetor, all that. We gotta fix that. Already mentioned that though. Uh, what else? Probably gonna have to locate a new radiator cap. That one is shot. The seals are bad on it. It's just in bad shape. Uh, diesel tank seems to be in okay condition. I'm gonna pull the strainer out and look and see if there's any flake or rust or crap in it. Sorry, any junk in it. Uh, I haven't really uh, gotten a good look at it. Uh, just ordered fuel filters for it this morning at Advance. I found the part number for those. I did open up the fuel filter housing yesterday and pulled it out and made a big mess because I didn't turn the fuel off. But those fuel filters are just black and horrible looking. So that definitely needs to be addressed. The fuel pressure gauge on the side of the housing was just barely reading any pressure. So I don't know how this thing was running. Uh, I go back to the whole, they don't make them like they used to thing. This thing would probably run on gravel, sand and muddy water if it had to. They don't, <laughs> you know, these old machines are just daggum stout. So address the fuel system, address the oil, all the fluids, get everything serviced, go back and grease all the hydraulics and tracks. We got some uh, issues here with the hydraulic rams on either side, their plate to mount to this outer plate. The bolts are missing. So we're gonna try to bend that back into shape and uh, put some new hardware here on either side uh grease up everything that needs to be greased up and uh yeah we should be good to start running this thing throw some paint on it because you know it's probably got a little bit of original paint still on it it's still mostly yellow but uh we got a lot of rust so address that and then the other thing is uh the seat's gone they put a boat seat in it it works but it's not bolted in so uh that's not going to be good, so I'm going to make a new seat most likely. I believe when I looked it up, the seat was about 285 online. So I'm probably just going to cut some plywood and put some foam and cover that and make a seat bottom in the sides and the back for it. So save a little bit of money on that. Uh, let's move around the machine and show you some more uh, of it. Uh, I don't know if this machine was equipped with an electric start originally cause a lot of the bracketry is missing from the other side where the electric start would be for the pony motor. But someone had rigged up an aftermarket electric motor and it's got a battery box on it, but it doesn't look like the original battery box for an electric start. It looks like someone just welded it onto the fender and it's halfway wired in, but looks like they had uh, mounted it on the side, had a handle on it, and basically they get the electric motor going, threw a belt on it, pulled it back to start the uh, pony instead of pull starting it. And also I'm missing the sheet metal that goes at the, between the uh, operator and the back of the pony motor. So gonna try to locate that, might make it, cause it's basically just a flat sheet of sheet metal with a cutout for the flywheel on the back of the pony. But uh, other than that, it doesn't seem to be too terribly much uh, to get this thing in operational condition again. So hopefully it won't be an extremely expensive uh, project and hopefully I haven't bought uh, a big problem, but we shall see. So I have absolutely no idea how many hours is on this machine. I flipped up the hour meter and looked in the sight glass with flashlight and all of the numbers are gone. I don't know if it uh, broke the gears and they're just missing or what. I can ac actually, let me, let me, uh, I can actually see, I think that, uh, oil or something has gotten in here. I think that oil is actually supposed to go in here. If I remember right from the service manual, you take this, uh, take this uh, bolt out and you're actually supposed to put oil in here that lubricates the injection pump. So maybe it's just the oil is too dirty, but with the flashlight, it looks like, I still can't make it out. I'm seeing a seven, a nine, and I can't read the rest. So maybe if I change the oil in here, I'll be able to get the hours off the machine. That would be nice to know. Here's our fuel pressure gauge, cleaned it up where it's actually, you can see it now. That's the only gauge that's uh, legible on the machine. Uh, what else? Uh, they kind of jerry-rigged up the front cover. You can't see that right now anyway because of the framing. So I don't know what I'm talking about it. 
let's see, uh, belt. Like I said, we're probably going to need to replace that belt. The tensioning system on this is really a bit odd. Uh, a lot of things on this thing are a little bit odd, which is it's just, you know, being an old machine, it's, it's kind of crazy the way some of this stuff was uh, put together. So simple, yet works so great. There's actually like a, uh, a set of uh, three, I think it's three bolts that you spin, uh, tighten up around the uh, hub of the fan pulley, and that's what tightens up your belt. And if I recall correctly, there's actually an oil cup on top of the water pump, and you put oil in there to oil the bearings of the water pump. It is a serviceable bearing in the water pump. There's also little oil cups for the generator front and rear bearings, which, you know, it's kind of crazy. Plus the, uh, a quart of oil in your injection pump to keep it lubricated. You know, stuff that's uh, all sealed bearings and things now in modern equipment that wasn't in this piece of equipment. But uh, yeah, I've looked over the block and the head. I don't see any visible cracking, but of course there's only so much of it I can see with the injection pump and the fuel system on this side and the exhaust on the other side. So, you know, that's take it for what it's worth. But other than that, most of the machines, factory and everything's still in place. It has been cutted and welded on quite a few times, but you'd expect that with a 65 year old piece of heavy equipment. Uh, what should uh, I think I'll take the hood off now and try to show you what I was talking about about the rocker cover. All right, got the hood off now. So now we can see the rocker cover and you can see what I was talking about. They super over tightened these four nuts and all this is bowed in in the center. They just crushed the center of that uh, rocker cover. And also they jammed these nuts on these studs and when I went to loosen them to uh, examine the rocker cover, it pulled these studs right out of the head and took the rocker assembly uh, and loosened that all up. So now I gotta try to find torque specs for that and also try to get uh, the nuts off of there. Uh, what else we got to look at here? Here's what I was talking about, about the throttle linkage. It's uh, all three of the bolts here are missing and I believe they're actually just snapped off inside of, I believe this is the intake manifold. Uh, it's gotta be. The other side's the exhaust manifold. So we're gonna have to extract those. Hopefully it won't be too terrible and uh, bolt this back in place. So we've got our throttle control uh, from the cab. We've also got a rounded off bolt here that's not tight from the air cleaner into the intake. So we gotta address that and probably regasket that. Looking over here on the pony motor, all of this is loose. We've got fasteners missing. I believe that was the bracket that held the electric starter. Uh, for the pony, there's a bolt missing here, was missing here out of the uh, cylinder head. I just stuck that one in there for now. I don't know if that's the right one or not. Um, yeah, so the magneto is unbolted and loose right now, which I talked about earlier, and the intake and fuel tank and all that is loose on the pony as well. You can see that there's bolts missing and there's one sticking up where they were just thrown in and hand tightened. Uh, what else? The, we'll talk about the fuel system. So I took the top of the fuel filter housing here off just enough to uh, pull it up and see the filters. And like I said, they were horrible. Uh, apparently someone's made their own gasket for this. This is uh, of course not the right gasket. It's just bolt gasket they put on there and cut the fit. So we're gonna make a new gasket for that. Uh, what else we got? Uh, probably that injector line I hope's just loose where it was uh, squirting diesel out. Uh, wouldn't hurt to replace that tiny bit of radiator hose cause it's really bad looking. Uh, we talked about the serpentine belt. Probably wanna flush this radiator out if I can cause there's a bunch of gunk in it. Uh, it's probably gonna be a pain, but at least it is a solid metal radiator. Of course, back in the day, there wasn't plastic uh, tank radiators like we have now. And to show you real quick what I was talking about, from the park position to engagement, it's supposed to be three inches of travel. And you see that's way more than three inches there before we actually start hitting the clutches. So we need to do the adjustment here. This side's not as terrible. There is our control for the blade up and down for the hydraulics. And we got to adjust the uh, throttle linkage here. Like I said before, we got to figure out something to do about this uh, air cleaner lid. But uh, other than that, I think we're pretty good. 
I'm gonna have to locate, I believe it's an inch and an eighth hex socket. That's the size, according to what I found on a forum for the drain plugs. So we can get that stuff drained out of there. Uh, hydraulic hoses are probably gonna be replaced. They're not terrible, but they're not great either. I mean, this tractor is sat out, so we do have some wear on the hydraulic hoses. We are getting some splits and cracks in certain spots, especially right here on this one. It's starting to crack apart. But other than that, it seems pretty solid, and they're not leaking, so nothing uh, pressing right away we have to do. So I guess I'll give you a shot real quick of the undercarriage. Uh, not a ton of wear on the sprockets, but they are showing some signs of wear. Uh, might need to weld and build those back up for long. And the rest of the tracks look to be in pretty decent shape. They're not like slam wore out and super thin. So that's pretty good. Like I said, you know, I'm not gonna put a billion hours on this machine. It's just gonna be for some light land clearing around the farm and probably pushing, uh, moving, pulling cars around, something like that. It's not gonna get, you know, full 12 hour days, seven days a week. So she ought to be good for another couple years at least. But uh, yeah, just uh, wanted to do a little overview video for y'all to check out and see a little more detail of uh, what I'm in for and what we got to work with. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little intro to my new to me Cat D2 Dozer. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.